struts. It's the third ward. It was where he was born and brought up. He wasn't hatched out in the sun like you. The only thing that stands between him and a busted jaw is them two little silver bars. Come sunset, he's not going to be wearing them no more. You going to bust his jaw, Hamhead? Right. <laughs> He'll murder you. I've known him since he was four years old. I wondered how you got them stripes. <laughs> Here they come, Mr. Grady. Matt's company. Oh, here they come, Miss Reynolds. Here they come. All right, split them back there. No him since he was four. Uh -huh. Yeah, we were both raised in this ward. Played hooky from the same schools. Both still after the same girl. You're going to get her, Sarge. Because when I get through with that face of his, she ain't even going to be able to recognize him. Brother, yours has changed, Tim. He looks a lot older, don't you think? That he does. He looks like a man. No. I'll say hello to Elsie for you, Bob. You're going to have a new sister-in-law. He would be very lucky. Elsie Reynolds is a fine girl. Yeah. How have you been, baby? Oh, Matt. Eyes back! I'll see you tonight. About 8.30 at your place, huh? Yes. I've got an idea about you and me. We'll talk it over. I've got an idea, too. Great turnout, Tim. See you later. I wasn't sure you'd recognize me. He hut! Danny, you want me, Mr. Brady? Will you do me a favor. Run down to City Hall and tell the boys to go easy on him tonight. You've only been out of the service two weeks yourself. You know how it was. Right. Well, thank you, Mr. Brady. <laughs> Harrigan, that he'll fix you up. Thank you, Mr. Britt. I don't know yeah, where to get it. Thank you. Uh, just one thing. Keep that boy Johnny of yours out of trouble, or next time it won't be just the county jail. It, it, it will be all right. It will be all right, Mr. Brady. Don't you worry. If we don't, I'm going to beat him. If we don't. Thank you. Good night. The biggest asset any town can have is transportation. Now, we have three major railroads here. We put up a Union station, I can guarantee two more within the year. That's why this ward is going to vote for a Union station. The third ward's all working people. They never take a train anywhere. They can't afford to. <laughs> That's right. That's why you're wrong, man. How are you ever going to step into my shoes if you won't learn? Who said anything about stepping into your shoes? Me a politician? Uh, oh, Matt, Matt. Must it always be like this? I thought maybe things might be different. I hope that you and I... Well, Bob Harry. Welcome home, son. <laughs> I saw you down there today. That was a smart-looking outfit. Hold it a minute, Matt. What are you going to do now, son? I guess I'll go back to law school if I can afford it. If I don't hurry, I'll be the oldest living student. When are we going to break this up? I'm glad to hear that, son. 
I'd always hoped Matt might go to college, but I guess he figures there isn't anything left for him to learn. Get off my back, Tim. I've wet nursed you ever since you were a punk kid. I fought your fights for you, kept you out of trouble. Now you come strutting back here with two tin bars on your shoulder telling me what you're gonna do and what you're not gonna do. You're gonna do exactly as I tell you. <laughs> Looks like you made it from captain to private and nothing flat. <laughs> laying him in, you'd think it was my jaw he was slugging. <laughs> Somebody's gonna whip him if he won't know what to do. You wouldn't want to see Matt lose in your own saloon, would you? I'd sooner see him lose here and now than later in a courtroom. Want me to break it up, Tim? No. Let it go to a finish. There's room for just one more, Captain. <laughs> hadn't ought to be scuffling indoors. You see me tomorrow. I want to have a talk with you. I developed this glass jaw. Tim was kind of sore, wasn't he? He'll get over it. He always does. Trouble with Timmy thinks he's my old man instead of my brother. I can't go for it, that's all. Tim ever make much money? Nah. He's not interested in money. And why did he could make a fortune out of this third ward? key to the city. The guy that controls it controls the city. And the state. You have a very great future ahead of you, Miss Tom. You crazy? This is small time. You think I want to spend the rest of my life here? Why not? What a better place. 
There's no limit to the amount of dough you can make here. Tim's got it all set up for you. It's ready-made, I tell you, ready-made. I don't want anything ready-made. I'll make my own. You want a place like Chicago? Now, you'll see him. Why, you dirty double-crossing. What's the matter, Matt? You knew I had a date an hour and a half ago. You've been letting me sit here and hang myself. <laughs> I've been helping you hang yourself. <laughs> Look, you gotta go with me. You gotta tell her why I'm late. It's your fault. Remember, I told you I had a date. Come on. It's only a few blocks from here. Elsie. Elsie! Go away. I'm going to see you, Elsie. Look, something happened, something I couldn't help. Open the door. Tim said you'd probably show up drunk. Ah, let's go, Matt. We can square it with her tomorrow. I don't want to square it tomorrow. I want to square it right now. Elsie, I'm giving you one more chance. You're going to open up? Then I'll break the door down. I'll tear it right off the hinges. Wait a minute, you can't do that. She's a school teacher, get her in trouble. You know why I came over here tonight? To ask you to marry me. You think I'm gonna hang around begging you? You ought to have your head examined. I'll pay two, if you please. That'll be uh, two bits. Out of the dollar. These are a dime apiece. Board. I, I haven't got enough money to pay for those. You had it all right if you won the prize. Okay, sister, the cup will be along any minute. But listen, I... Take your hands off her. The little fellow who just left punched him. You told him he owed you a nickel, so you'll lose, fathead. Now, look at here, you. Who are you calling fathead? How many? Sixty-one. cockroach strip. What's 
Mr. Mitchell. Laurie Reed. You headed someplace? No. Want to come along with me? No. Why not, if you work here? What? Well, this is where you work, ain't it? Of course I don't. Look at me. I'm not pretty enough. You're crazy. You're a very pretty girl. Oh, you must be drunk. Go on home and leave me alone. Don't tell me I'm drunk. Nobody tells me I'm drunk. I'm sober. And you're pretty. Understand me. You know that's a lie. I'll show you if it's a lie or not. You think I'd marry a girl who wasn't pretty, do you? Well, I'm gonna get married tonight. I'm gonna marry you. Oh, no! no yes, no. yes, yes. Look, look, I know you must be a very nice man, but, but you, you can't marry me. You, you don't even know who I am, and I don't know who you are. And... Well, Matt Brady, that's enough. What do you want, a pedigree? Oh, I remember in the parade today. Captain Matt Brady. Mm. Oh, you're Alderman Brady's brother. Well, you see, you can't marry. Lewis, nobody tells me what I can or can't not do. Only me. We're gonna get married right away. But then you, you, you can't get a license at this time of night. They'll open up for me. But I don't want to marry you. Why not? What have you got to lose? You wake up in the morning and you'll hate me for the rest of your life. She's that bad, huh? Well, you see her. A beat up little alley cat. What? What about us? Well, somebody's got to tell her. I, I thought maybe you would. All right. Just tell her I'm sorry. Tell her I didn't mean what I said last night. Not good. You think that's such a good idea? Why not? Well, uh, I'm letting her know you're sorry. After all, you're married to somebody else now. Wouldn't it be better for Elsie if she didn't even know you were sorry? Well, you're right. Look, you, you got to meet this Dave sometime. Why don't you come on over at the hotel? Maybe we'll all have lunch or something. No, I... I've got to tell Elsie this, this 
The sooner I tell her, the better off she'll be. I think maybe she and I better have lunch today. Do you know who I am? Yeah. Please come over here. I, I tried to stop you. I, I suppose I could have stopped you if I tried hard enough. Forget it. It's done. This is the woman, huh? She's my wife, Tim. Your wife? Heaven help her. And if this is your doing, you got exactly what you deserved. Suppose you talk to me. It's my marriage, my business. Anytime you're in trouble, it's my business. This is just another jam you're in. So now let's be reasonable and let me handle this. Tim, stop handling my life. You'll be divorced in two weeks. You know it. There's never going to be a divorce. Understand? What about Elsie? You're an old man. I don't want to have to hit you. So get out. Get out! I could kill you, Tim! Almost have, Matt. I guess I didn't handle things very well. What I was really trying to stop was your killing yourself. I'll let you out today. But if you don't go today, I'm going to keep you for the rest of my life. That's the way it is. Come in. Are you Matt Brady? Yeah. You better come down to the lobby. Your brother just stopped dead. Man who, when duty called, unself. 
selfishly put aside his own plans and ambitions to assume the burden of civic responsibility from the hands of his fallen brother. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Matt Brady. Wonderful, Matt. Thank you, Governor. Oh, I do wish Mrs. Brady had been able to come. I've been so looking forward to meeting her. Thank you, ma'am. Let's hope she feels better soon. It seems she's never well enough to be seen anywhere with him. I appreciate the lift, Mr. Brady. What's this, Ernie? I didn't know you were in trouble. Yeah, well, I, I didn't want to bother you, but the bank just wouldn't hold still any longer. How are you going to live? Well, I still own that piece of the farm, and I can still plow a pretty straight furrow. You've got a lot of relatives down in the Hollister section, haven't you? I got more relatives than money. But they all vote, and they got friends. How'd you like to be put up for district commissioner down there? What do you say? Why, Mr. Brady, I... Well, it just about saved my life, that's all. Come down to the office. We'll fix it up. Bye, Mr. Brady. So long. Thanks. Mm. Thank you, again. So Maybe that was a mistake, Matt. How come? Well, I've known Ernie Jackson ever since he was a kid. He's a little guy, but he's full of guts. He'll be a good commissioner, but he won't play ball. And he won't take orders if he don't like them. That'll be a new experience for us. Nine's the point. Roll the dice. How about some action? Andy, seven's up. The dice to walk up. Place your bets. Come on, man. Keep the game moving. Get behind the eight. Folks are good people. They've done a lot of good work in the precinct. That's why I'm going to get you out of this jam. But if I ever hear of you taking a shot at the cop again, I'm going to make it a point to drop by your place and give you a going over you won't forget. This will be the last time, Mr. Brady. Make sure of it. Get those charges against Johnny here dropped. Thanks a lot, Mr. Brady. I won't forget this. I wonder if it would be in line for me to make a little contribution to the club. When I want a contribution from your outfit, I'll tell you. Sure, Mr. Brady. You mind if I give you a real good tip? On a horse? Never bet him. This would be an awful good time to begin then, Mr. Brady. Primrose in the fourth out west. I got information. Thanks again, Mr. Brady. I don't see why you turned down this contribution. There are four of us beside Mozzie are trying to take over the rackets in this town. When we see who turns up top dog, that'll be the guy we talk to. Uh, there's an old friend of yours waiting. Who? Bob Herrick. Well, why didn't you say so? Send him in. Wait a minute. Uh, call a bookie. Put 500 on that uh, uh, primrose. How are you, Matt? Gosh, it's good to see you. You're looking great. you gained a little weight, haven't you? Oh, a little bit. Hey. What's this? This is my Phi Beta Kappa key. It's an honor society. I can't take all the credit, though. That's one of the advantages of marrying a schoolteacher. Elsie tutored me. You and Elsie, huh? 
Uh, Matt, you didn't waste your money. Don't ever let her know. Here, sir. Uh, sit down. <laughs> well, I got myself a lawyer now. A lawyer I can trust. You ready to open up shop? Whenever you say the word. I uh, understand things have been going pretty good. I got the city in the bag. Another couple of years, I'll have most of the state. Is it uh, paying off? What do you think? Enough for two? Enough for everybody. You even talk different now. Talk like an Easterner. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Hello. Oh, Millard, yes. I've been waiting for him to call back. Put him on. Hello, Mr. Millard. Yes, I know who you are. I know all about your cement business. Perhaps more than you do, Mr. Millard. For instance, I know you're going out of business unless something is done. So I've decided to make things a lot easier for you. I'm going to be half owner. That's right, 50% of the stock. Why? Because it's my town. If I say we don't need any new streets paved, they don't get paved, that's all. That'll be fine, Mr. Millard. And no, I'll have my attorney draw them up. Goodbye. Well, Bob, your first job's already waiting for you. Sounds like you just uh, made a deal. Hmm. I've been laying for that guy. Millard Cement Company, Incorporated. You draw up the papers, change the name to the Brady Millard Cement Company. Take a part for yourself, too, 10%. Anything you say, boss. And, Bob, about Elsie. Yes? It's better if she doesn't know anything about this, or any of our business. Sure, Matt, sure. A lawyer never confides in his wife anyway. It isn't ethical. It's better if she doesn't know you're part of the organization. Things like that, well, they're important to Elsie, so it's up to us to keep her happy. Fine. Fine. Say, why don't you and Elsie come to the house for dinner tonight? It's a great idea. You and I have got a lot of things to catch up on. I'll see you later. Right. That Primrose nag came in and paid 52 bucks. Oh, you should have heard the bookie. He's really weeping. Says you slipped him one. Must have been fixed in concrete. He does, huh? Well, get a new bookie. Oh, let him squawk, Mr. Brady. He's a loser. Barney Square. He won't take a run out no matter how much you bet. What do you know? $13,000. you something on the mantel. It's a present. Thank you. Well, aren't you going to look at it? Go ahead. Open them up.
What's the matter? Don't you like them? Oh, oh they're beautiful. I just never go out any place where I could wear them. Hmm. Wear them around the house. Wear them tonight. Put on that new dress you got, the, the filmy one, and, and fix your face up nice. Put some lipstick on and, and plenty of that stuff around the eyes, you know. Why? We're having company for dinner. Who? My old friend Bob Herrick and his wife, Elsie. What's wrong? Oh, nothing, nothing, except I'm surprised. This is the first time we've ever had people in the dinner. Well, don't you like having people in? Oh, of course I do. I've always wanted to have people in. Hmm. Maybe we will from now on. But will, will she be wearing so much too? I don't know. Well, I mean, if she doesn't, I feel kind of out of place. Look, if Elsie doesn't wear diamonds, it's because she hasn't got diamonds. You got them, so you wear them. All right, man. All you got to do is make yourself as, as pretty as you can. Have a good cigar. Oh, no, thanks. I never quite got used to them. That's too bad. Fella makes them up for me in Havana. Buck a throw. Tim always said a man was never licked if he had a good cigar between his teeth. What happens if he doesn't have a cigar? <laughs> I want some brandy. That I know I can handle. Mm. <sighs> you two go ahead. Laurie and I'll join you in a minute. Of course, every town's got its reformers. And this one, we got a, a lawyer named Stanley Millard, him and a few preachers. Of course, they're not going to get any place. Millard? Mm-hmm. You heard of him. Got a brother in the cement business. Oh, yes. Yes, I, <laughs> I believe I have. I'm all for reform, mind you. Except when it's bad for business. <laughs> This is real stuff. Sixty years old. Here you are. Thank you. None of that fat stuff, Jim, that everybody's drinking. How do you like Larry's new diamonds? I've been looking at them all evening. I, I don't feel quite right in them. I'd like them better if you wore some, too, but... <laughs> How do you like that? Over $100,000 worth of rocks, and she's complaining. You'd wear them if they were yours, wouldn't you, Elsie? Well, since Bob is just starting out in business, I don't think it's anything I'm going to have to worry about for a long time. Well, we can fix that. Who takes care of the dough in this family? <laughs> she does. Here's a little something to get started on. Matt, what is this? I don't understand. Go count it and you'll catch on quick. Should be about 20,000 there. You people got to get started right. You'll need a swell suite of offices someplace, and, and you'll need a nice house down in the Bishop's Road District someplace. You've got to have the best. Now do you understand, Elsie? <laughs> I told you the first day, if you didn't go then, I'd never let you go. I've changed my mind. Why? I want a divorce. A divorce? Because I just can't go on living without some understanding, some feeling I'm needed. You're in love with Elsie, Matt, and she's in love with you. You're crazy. I want a divorce so you and Elsie can be together. Elsie's a married woman. Not a happily married woman. There's more between you two than there is between her and her husband. 
You're talking about my best friend's wife. If you won't divorce me for your own good, man, divorce me for my sake. I have to get away from you. I can't live without love. You seem to be doing all right. Don't make fun of me, man. If you won't give me a divorce, I'll have to hire an attorney and divorce you. I'm not going to have a divorce. Every cheap reform in this town's gunning for me. My private life is going to stay clean. Why don't you tell the real truth? You told your brother you'd never divorce me. You killed him and you're still fighting his ghost. <laughs> Who do you think you are? You've never asked before. My father was a bum. I never even saw him. My mother was what you thought I was. I'm your wife. Then you'd be wise to try to get to know me. Because I'm stronger than you'll ever be. If you ever take one step to a lawyer, or ever say that again, I'll have you committed to an insane asylum. How does Elsie like the new house? Oh, she likes it fine. Of course, she's a uh, little concerned about how I'm going to be able to pay for it. Well, you didn't tell her anything, did you? No, no, as we agreed. I just told her I'd scrape the money up somehow. Well, what are you worried about? What else is on your mind? Well, a while back, the fire insurance companies raised their rates. The state objected and impounded the additional premiums. Now, that frozen money, 12 million of it. The companies want it back. They appeal to me as insurance commissioner. Were they entitled to it? Through the courts, it'd take them years. Hey, how could we... Uh-uh. Uh it's too hot. It's all a matter of public record. Oh. Well, give them the dough. They got their money and tied up. They're entitled to it. Always remember, Bob, it's hard enough to be a businessman without having to fight the government, too. Time you want to talk to me, suppose you come to my office. This is my brother, Matt, Stanley Millard. From what you've been saying about me in the newspapers, we won't shake hands, huh? I don't want any of my dirt to come off on you. What are you doing here? My brother wants to sell his interest in the cement business. Oh? That's your right. Why? Because I'm going to ruin you, Mr. Brady. And you don't want to ruin brother along with me. That's approximately correct. You look happy about this, Roy. Don't worry, someone will always take care of you. What have you got against me, Mr. Millard? Aside from the fact that I've made this brother of yours a rich man. Just that you're a thief and a thug? We have more speakeasies in this city than schools. More gambling dives than churches and more murders per capita than any city in the country. What else? My daughter isn't safe after nightfall in the streets of the town she was born in. I'm going to see to it that she is safe. I'm all for daughters in safe streets, especially if they're well paid. How are you going to do all this? I'm going to prove to the world that you've been voting 20,000 tombstones in the third ward. Seems kind of disrespectful to the dead, but... Okay with me. What else? The decent people of this city are finally united. We are organizing to put through a managerial form of government and to sweep all those ghost votes of your machine back into the cemetery. Fine, I'm all for it. Put me down for a thousand dollars. Your contribution will be rejected, Mr. Brady. Dirty money again, huh? 
Well, let's get back to the cement business. How much of my dirty money is it going to cost to buy your brother out of this joint? Well, I'm sure we'll arrive at a fair price. Uh, we'll have to negotiate. You mean sit around and bargain? Uh, I don't do business that way. Take a piece of paper and put on a figure. That'll be the price. You mean that, Mr. Brady? I mean everything I say. Find that a fair price? You've got yourself a deal. There'll be a check in the mail this afternoon. Now take this well-bred little weasel and get out of here. I've been wanting his piece for over two years. I didn't dare make the first move. But Matt, you let him make his own figure? Ah, I made him make his own figure. With the election coming up, he couldn't ask for too much Brady money. <laughs> How do you like that? Two hundred thousand dollars less than it's worth. <laughs> Hello, Lucy, give me Barney. You better get those papers made up this afternoon before they change their minds and make it a cashier's check. Right. Hey, Barney, put 2,000 on Alistair in the second. Sixty-seven thousand votes. Sixty-seven thousand and twenty-three, to be exact. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a great campaign, Mr. Masterson. Thank you, Mr. Attorney General. Would you gentlemen care for some coffee? Yeah. Well, Ernie, it's good. Uh, I'll let like you black, black, please. No, oh, sure. No, no. Okay, okay. You know, Matt's had Governor Beck in there for over fifteen minutes. By now, he should have that paving contract in his back pocket. You just make out a list of any appointments you'd like, and I'll see that they're made. That's very kind of you, Governor. I'd like you to meet some of my boys. This is Tom Masterson, my new city manager. It's a pleasure, sir. Thank you, Mr. Governor. And this is the smartest attorney in the whole United States, and the best friend I ever had, Bob Herrick. It's an honor, Mr. Governor. Any friend of Mr. Brady's is a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Ernie. This is Ernie Jackson, Hollister County Commissioner. Ernie doesn't know it yet, but he's the next congressman from this district. Even though he built a courthouse without using one drop of Brady cement, that's how honest he is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly have my support, Congressman. Thank you. I hope I can measure up to the responsibility. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Governor, there's some news photographers downstairs. I thought if anyone didn't want to be seen... <laughs> Mr. Brady, I think I'd better... I understand. Beat it. Congressman, show the governor the back door. Yeah. That's what I said. 15,000 on the nose. Matchless in the sixth. <clears throat> What's the matter, Barney? Afraid you won't get paid? Okay, then. Thought you said Bob would be right over. He will be. He should be here any minute. Tell. Why do you gamble so heavily? What else is there to do? There are other things in this world besides trying to prove that no one can beat you. What is this, an uplift meeting? Oh, hello, Bob. Hi, Matt. Matt has the crazy idea that nobody can beat him. <laughs> he hasn't been yet. Not gonna be either. Trouble is with me, I'm always winning and somebody else walks off with the prize. You know that, Bob. It was always me and Elsie, right from the beginning. Then I got drunk and blew the whole thing. Matt, we're all grown up now. That's just a part of the past. If you'd only open your eyes sometime, if you'd only look at Laurie, you'd see a woman who loves you. A woman you want to love. Uh, it's getting chilly, dear. I think you'd better get your robe.
was with the Board of Governors at the country club this afternoon. You were blackballed. Blackballed? Who blackballed me? Apparently there were six or seven of them. Uh, I'm sorry, Matt. I did the best I could. I should have gone to college. Didn't blackball you. Only me. I wouldn't care for myself. I wouldn't be caught drunk with that bunch of four flushes. I wanted some place Larry could go. Well, I'll fix that. Get me Central, 1100. If they don't like me now, they're certainly not gonna like me two weeks from now. Let me speak to Tom Masterson, Brady speaking. Tom, you know Prospect Creek that runs through the country club district? We're gonna turn it into a sewage disposal. Save the taxpayers a lot of money. You heard me. Right. How do you like that? You'll have some uh, complaints. When the complaints reach the protest stage, I want it condemned. I'll build a four-lane cement highway right over the top of it. Pants on, Bob. I hear you. Just tell me what's happening. I don't know, Matt. Nobody knows. The ticker's way behind. Everybody's dumping at any price. Shut up. Get some facts and call me back. Time, any place. Wednesday. Yeah, okay. Shares will be dumped in the market before this day's trading is over. This is disaster. A major disaster. Trouble. It's good to hear you say that. Oh, no, Matt. I'm not glad about it. It's just that I'm glad you're telling me. Maybe I could help. I know it's hard for you, Matt. But I could help if you're in trouble. Maybe you and I could help each other. Yeah. Maybe we could. No man should be alone when he's in trouble. Husbands kiss their wives. Oh, don't be afraid, man. Kiss me. What are we getting 
ourselves for. <laughs> You're trying to make a fool out of me. I never put very much value on myself. But at least I'm able to see that it's you that's no good. And I'm beginning to understand that I do have value. If only because you have none at all. If you should die alone in this room in the middle of the night, there's not one creature in the whole world that could honestly say that anything had been lost. Everybody wiped out. The bank won't loan 30 cents on a $5 bill. That includes you and me. Yeah, I really got caught. I owe a half a million dollars. Quit pacing back and forth and sit down. They're here, Mr. Brady. Send them in. I think I have found a little piece of ready cash. You know Mr. Harry, don't you, Johnny? Yeah, I know. This is Murray Lazetti. He's one of my best boys. You have a friend? I have a friend. I trust my friend. Likewise, Mr. Brady. Sit down, gentlemen. You're doing all right for yourself, haven't you, Johnny? I make out. The organization's going to need money. Lots of money. Well, you see, things are a little different than they used to be, Mr. Brady. You want money? What do we get? Up to now, you've been operating in only four wards. I intend to open up the rest of the city. Plus the county, plus the state. Real wide open. How much of the take does the organization need, Mr. Brady? You get 25% of the total. Deal. There are two things I don't want you to forget. First is, don't cross me. What I give, I can take away. The second is, there's only room for one man at the top. You want to know my plans? I certainly don't. Better that way, anyhow. Anything else? Yeah. I want $200,000 in cash here first thing tomorrow morning. You got it. In order for me to do a nice operation, I need something from you. I okay all police appointments. Wherever I open up, I have to deal with the cop on the beat. If he knows that I can hire him or fire him. I get it. But if you're going to be unofficial chief of police, you've got to keep order in the city. I'd be a chump not to. And if any of your boys kicks over the traces too far, you turn them in without batting an eye. Don't worry about it. Johnny, I think we're going to get along all right. I predict it, Mr. Brady. See you, Mr. Harry. I don't like it, Matt. I don't like it at all. That man's got to mean nothing but trouble. Of course. Right now, he means money, and that's what we need. I tell you, boys, we don't deal till we get what we want. They need our delegates. We need the Central Valley Dam Project as a fair trade. Mr. Bentley's outside and he wants to talk to you. Well, what do you know? That's the first time the Central Committee's come to me. Well, Earl! <laughs> what a surprise! Hi, Earl. Thank you, thank you. Hey, that was a good session. Well, hello there. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, 
As far as I can tell, the next time around should do it. <laughs> Looks like a landslide. What about California? In the bag, right behind Texas. Any idea how your delegation is going? Well, now, Earl, maybe with a little more butter, we... Uh, you got a match, George. Thanks. We're gonna hold out. Well, it's too bad you can't be with us. We've just pledged New York, Illinois, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. I was hoping we could make it unanimous. Now, just a minute, Earl. We wouldn't want the boys to think that we're being hard-headed. Uh, give us a chance to talk to Matt. I'm sure he feels like we all do. We only want what's good for the country. Thank you, gentlemen. I'll see you on the convention floor. I was born in the wrong part of the country. I should have gone to Chicago. And I wouldn't have had to change sides to save our scrawny hides. I'd have named the candidate myself. I'd have had my own president. Got a minute, Matt? Sure. Um, the governor's going to have to appoint somebody to fill that vacant seat in the Senate this week, isn't he? Probably tomorrow. Matt, I want that job. I hope you're not serious, Bob. Of course I'm serious. You're due for a disappointment, fella. You're not a politician, you're a lawyer. Darn good one. But I need a man who run for office before, been elected. Built up strong support in his home district. Knows his way around Washington. You just don't fill the bill. They laugh at me. Well, who does fill that bill? Ernie Jackson. Hey. Okay, Matt. You're the boss. Upstairs, and you stay down here. Yeah. We're in trouble. Morty Lizetti was arrested last night in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Go on. He's the only one, besides you and me, who knows about the way the money goes between us. You said he wouldn't talk. I ain't sure now. There's an old narcotics rap hanging over. I'm sorry. What's done is done. Now, here's what goes. The G-men have taken Maury to Washington to ring him out. He's passing through town this afternoon at 3 and makes a change of trains here. Don't tell me any more about it. Handle it. I'll handle it, all right. And that gun's all stitch. You got downstairs? Yeah. Leave him out of it. Mr. Brady, he's a good boy. He's a killer. G-men don't carry guns. I don't want any blood. Just take Lizetti. That's all that's necessary, understand? Sure, boy, sure. It's my mistake to trust the guy. I'll take care of it. See ya.
say this is a three o'clock train from Hot Springs on time? As far as I know, it is. Give him the keys. We'll take Lazzetti. Mr. Brady, I know it. You know what you've done, don't you? Boys had their orders. One of them got trigger happy. Then it started. 48 hours, Johnny. Now look, Mr. Brady. 48 hours. It's them or you. Where do you want him? Turn him over to Hillary here. He'll give him to the feds. Don't we back him up at all? We back him right into the electric chair. It's a bad idea not to stand behind your own men. It's a worse idea to kill anyone in my brother's station. Call me later if you hear anything. I'll pick you up in the morning. Okay. Good night. Good night. Hello, Elsie. I'd like to speak to Bob for a minute, please. What? Well, what's the matter? Well, I'm 
Was he coming over here? When I thought he was with you, he didn't come home. Matt? Hello, isn't Bob with you? Oh, hello, Elsie. Um, he had to attend a big bar association meeting downtown. He told me to call you, but I forgot. Oh, well, it wasn't important. Sorry to have bothered you. No bother at all. Good night, Elsie. Mr. Brady, I got a message from Johnny Mazia. Put him on the phone. I can't do that, Mr. Brady. He ain't here. He said to tell you he's got to talk to you. I want to talk to him. Put him on. Like I said, he ain't here. Then where is he? He's lost, Mr. Brady, on account of the heat. He only said to tell you he's got to talk to you. You tell him to get over here right away. Your house is too public. He said for you to go to the, your office, the cement works. He'll get in touch with you there. And you go, just like I tell you. OK. By yourself, Mr. Brady. By myself. I'm going to have a nice talk with your boss. If it comes out all right, you ain't got a thing to worry about. Good evening, Mr. Brady. Chief Hillarium. Go right in, he's there. Come in. You're just in time, Mr. Brady, to hear this. You and your entire corrupt administration have come to the end of the line. I warned you before that the decent citizens have had enough. We've discussed it with Chief Hillary, and he has volunteered the use of the police force to restore law and order to the city at once. Is that true, George? That's the way it's going to be. Matt. Things might be rough till we get the job done. Better let me detail a couple of men to go along with you in case of trouble. Give them to him. He's gonna need them. Here. Someday someone's gonna put your head in a jar, Stitch. Where's Mazia? Upstairs, waiting for you. We deal. What do you want? Take the heat off my boys. I don't deliver anybody to the feds. Okay, what else? More pie than I've been getting. How much? 75%. You got it. Including the games and the slot machines and the liquid stock. Okay. And protection. All you want. You're doing all this for a pal, huh? That's right. <laughs> and I had you figured for a smart guy. You're a chump. I'd have settled for 
I didn't want to take a chance because of Bob. You understand, Matt? This makes the whole setup different. Don't try to double cross me. I'm the boss now. When do I get Bob? Not before I find out if you're spinning me a fairy tale. Hold it, Matt. That's the way it's gonna be. Stand, Ernie. I don't want you to do anything to impede justice. All I want you to do is find out what they're really after. The thing that I won't do is interfere with an investigation that's being carried on by the federal government. Well, thanks anyway, Ernie. Goodbye. I'll say this much. The Brady machine sure elected an honest senator. I'm Scott of UP. Why isn't Bob Herrick going to defend you, Matt? Because he's my chief witness for the defense, that's why. Jim Bacon of AP. What else you got to say, Matt? I got plenty to say. The boys in Washington started this name calling. By the time this trial is over, we'll all know who's a liar and who isn't. And not only that, gentlemen, when Mr. Brady's acquitted, which he's going to be, we're going to start throwing around a few lawsuits ourselves. Thanks, Matt. All right, boys. All right. Thank you, Matt. See you later. What do you think it really looks like, Matt? Well, it's just on a fishing expedition. And Bob gets on the stand and tangles with that blue-nosed windbag. That case will collapse like a hot air balloon. It has been stipulated between counsel, both for the prosecution and the defense, that the usual opening argument to the jury will be waived. It is so ordered. Prosecution will please proceed. Call your first witness. Your Honor. I 
I don't see Bob Herring yet. I wish to call as first witness for the prosecution, Mr. Robert Herring. Order, please. What are they trying to pull? He's our witness. Your Honor, I object. Shut up. Bob knows what he's doing. You swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but truth, help God? I do. Please be seated. State your full name. Robert Clay Herrick. And your address, sir? Seven Bishops Road. And you are at present District Commissioner of Insurance? I am. Please describe how you attained that position. I object, Your Honor. On the grounds the question is irrelevant. Objection sustained. Counsel will proceed. And now, Mr. Herrick, have you, in the course of the past three months, had meetings with me and representatives of the uh, Department of Justice? I have. What was discussed? The release of certain impounded insurance funds. You released them? They were turned back to the insurance companies by my office. For what reason? In return for a fee of $1,200,000. This was a fee to you, a public officer? No, sir. And who got it? It was paid over to the defendant, Matt Brady. <laughs> That's not true, Bob. I don't know anything about a fee from the insurance company. If there was a fee, I never got a dime of it. You know that, Bob. What are you doing to me? What are you doing to me? What are you doing to me? Why? Why? tried to warn me. He lied, but he could have told the truth about a dozen other things, and the answer would have been the same. I've been headed in this direction for a long time. Whatever was wrong in Bob was wrong in me first. I'm very sorry, Matt. I'm truly sorry. You didn't have to put up the bail. It wouldn't have made any difference. I'm leaving. You've got a life to lead. Oh, no, it isn't that, Matt. I'd stay forever if I thought it would do any good. But during all of our years together, it's been living in the same house with a man that, that can't even remember your name. Nobody, not even an animal, can live in complete loneliness. I was never a beautiful woman, but, but baby, I'm the most beautiful woman you ever knew. Inside. Look at me, man. Pick up the bags, ma'am? Yes. Bob was never your friend. Elsie was never your love. And I was never your wife. The world was never your home. Goodbye, man. 